everyone had gathered for the big day. The wedding of Miss Taylor Turdley was an event that every turtle within a hundred yards vowed not to miss. Everything had seemed perfect, too. But then it happened. Litter suddenly blanketed the wedding party, even the bride and groom. Bags of trash had been thrown from the overpass that towered over the creek. But such behavior was no longer going to be tolerated, at least not by Taylor's brother, Thurman. As Thurman glanced over at his sister, who was in tears, banana peels covered her wedding dress and shell. That's it! Enough is enough! exclaimed Thurman with his fist aimed high. Forget it, Thurman, said his father. There is nothing we can do about the human's son. Forget it? How can you say that, Dad? Something has to be done. It's time for action, Thurman said. And with that, Thurman told everyone he had to go. Where are you going, Thurman? asked his mother. I'm going to put a stop to this, Mom. Don't go, shouted a voice from the wedding party. You'll end up in a kid's fishbowl and you'll barely have room to stretch. You'll be soup, Thurman, shouted another. As voices continued to ring out about the dangers that awaited him, Thurman was undeterred. He was determined to make a difference. How exactly? Well, Thurman wasn't sure. He just knew he couldn't sit by as the land he loved became cluttered with trash. Traveling a distance of any length takes quite a while for a turtle. So, to make headway on his journey, Thurman swam with the current of a nearby river. After a couple of days adrift, Thurman finally saw signs of human civilization. And everywhere he looked there was trash. Lots and lots of trash. Dumping garbage where they didn't live was bad enough, but Thurman was surprised to see people living in it themselves. Garbage was in their water. It littered the streets where they drove their automobiles. And it was even where children played. As Thurman pondered how he was going to address the crisis, several people were suddenly approaching him. Fearing for his safety, he quickly turned to hide, and then everything turned dark. Thurman had stuck his head into a muddied plastic bottle that had been left on the riverbed. Eager to escape, he pulled with all of his might, but without success. A science teacher from a nearby elementary school was now standing close to the river with her students. They were on a field trip to help the environment. The children would be planting trees, and a local newspaper reporter was on hand to cover the event. Okay, before we get started, who knows the answer? asked Mrs. Thornberry. Several of the students raised their hands. Yes, Susie, said Mrs. Thornberry. It's our carbon footprint, said the young girl. That's right, Susie. Very good. Even though each and every one of us has our own carbon footprint, it affects everyone and everything around us. As her students began breaking ground to plant trees, Mrs. Thornberry continued to speak about the different effects that carbon footprints have on the environment. She reminded the children of the pollution that comes from factories and automobiles and the carbon dioxide that is released into the air because of them. By planting trees that day, the children would be combating carbon dioxide by putting more oxygen back in the air. Does everyone remember the four R's that we discussed in class? asked Mrs. Thornberry. Yes, Mrs. Thornberry said her students in unison. Rethink, reduce, reuse. But then young Robbie Pursley shouted, Recycle! 
before any of the other students could say the last word. You see, Robbie couldn't contain his excitement. He had stumbled across a plastic bottle, but it was no ordinary bottle. It had a turtle stuck in it. As everyone came over to view the bottle, Robbie held it up in the air for all to see. The local news reporter captured the moment with his camera. As Thurman began to feel his body being tugged, he feared the worst. And then suddenly, the brightness of the sun shone over him. Wow, look at him, said Robbie. One by one, the students touched Thurman's shell. Even through his fear, Thurman felt comforted when hearing what the children were doing for the environment. The anger that had driven him to leave his home suddenly faded away. Because of the actions of the children that day, Thurman knew there was hope for a cleaner world. Can I keep him, Mrs. Thornberry? I don't think that is a good idea, Robbie. This is his home. He needs to be set free. Robbie sighed. Oh but did as his teacher requested. He wiped the mud off of Thurman's shell and released him. After he had finally reached home, Thurman was greeted as a hero. He learned that his rescue had made the front page of the local newspaper. Inspired by the story, every school in the region began cleaning up the trash that littered the area to include rivers and ponds. Thurman just didn't understand why everyone back home made such a big fuss. Besides, there was much work to do, and getting stuck in a bottle wasn't exactly what he had planned. But Thurman's family reminded him of the courage it took to do what he did. His quest for change was proof that one individual can make a difference, and that each and every one of us should try. It's up to you. Okay kids, I hope you learned something new. I hope you learned that littering and throwing your trash anywhere is bad, not only for you, but it affects the environment and the creatures that live on it. I hope you enjoyed the story. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up it would help our channel grow. And also, if you're not a subscriber, ask your parents if it's okay to subscribe. It's free, and we do new videos all the time. You wouldn't want to miss out on new stories. Hi, welcome to Storytime on Asher's Day. We have a very special book that was given to us by author Artie Knapp. It's called Little Otter Learns to Swim. It's written by Artie Knapp and illustrated by Guy Hobbs. Little Otter started to quiver. She was scared of the mighty river. It was the first time away from her den, but Mother Otter told her to jump in. Then Little Otter was having fun, splashing about in the summer sun. Her first swimming lesson was about to begin. Little Otter's excitement caused Mother to grin. Mother Otter was patient and taught her pup with love. They swam underwater and floated above. Diving practice came next as Little Otter dove off logs. 
It's a great way to sneak up on unsuspecting frogs. When lessons were done, it was time for a rest. Little Otter lay snug against Mother's chest. The next few weeks were more of the same, swimming, diving, and playing water games. One morning, Mother said she'd return in a hurry, but seeing a bobcat made Little Otter worry. The bobcat was young, too. It stared and hissed. Then an eagle swooped down, but luckily missed. Little Otter was frightened and dove underwater. Although afraid, she was a proud Otter's daughter. When she came up, Mother was still away. So Little Otter ran home to hide for the day. Mother Otter returned and listened intently. She comforted her pup and spoke to her gently. The river, said Mother, is the safest place to be, away from their predators, like wolf and coyote. At dawn, Little Otter hurried back to the river. The moon was still lighting the sky with a sliver. The river was where Little Otter longed to be. There, she was home with great company. The end. Now, have you ever been afraid of anything? Like trying anything new? So have I. Everyone has. It's completely normal to be scared of something different. But just like maybe learning to swim for the first time or riding your bicycle without training wheels for the first time or even trying a new food for the first time, if you try it, you'll probably enjoy it and be glad that you did. So although it might seem scary to try something new, you should definitely try. And you might be happy that you did. About North American River Otters River otters are very important animals, and not only because they're so cool. River otters live on land, but they hunt and travel in the water. That means they need healthy environments to live in so that they can get clean water and good food to eat, just like humans and all other living creatures. If you have river otters living near you, it's a good sign for your environment. Humans often destroy river otters' habitat, polluting their water, depleting their fish stocks, and tearing down streamside trees and shrubs for their own convenience or desires. The average lifespan for a river otter in the wild is 10 to 12 years. You can help North American river otters. Teachers can help students either work together as a class to write a letter or write individual letters to their representatives, offering all the reasons they want to save watersheds. Healthy watersheds make healthy otter sheds for otters, humans, and all of us. Some states still allow trapping otters for fur. Check to see if your state allows it, and if it does, you can ask your representative to stop it. Otters need their coats and humans do not.
Getting to Know Ronnie, a story about autism by Artie Knapp. The flickering lights gleamed by the playground pavement. They fascinated young Ronnie McAllister, who headed in their direction. But then the flickering lights abruptly stopped. So Ronnie did too. But as quickly as the lights had faded, they reappeared. So Ronnie moved towards them once more. On each side of the flickering lights, there sat a boy. The boys were rolling marbles, which caused the sun's light to reflect between them. Although they noticed Ronnie staring in their direction, the two boys remained focused on playing their game. Now, standing directly over the two boys, Ronnie continued to watch the marbles intently as they rolled across the pavement below. One of the boys looked up and said, Why do you keep watching our game? Don't you have anything better to do? Ronnie didn't respond to the boy's question. That made the other boy angry. He stood up and said, Can't you hear? He said, Don't you have anything better to do? With his eyes still directed at the marbles below, Ronnie answered, Don't you have anything better to do? Believing that Ronnie was mocking them, the two boys yelled at him to go away and leave them alone. Ronnie's personal aide, Miss Thornberry, who had been observing close by, walked over to see what the problem was. As the two boys explained to Miss Thornberry and another teacher what Ronnie was doing, Miss Thornberry whispered something in the other teacher's ear. Then Miss Thornberry leaned over to Ronnie and asked him to come with her. As Miss Thornberry took Ronnie aside, he burst into tears and began slapping the sides of his head with both hands. The children on the playground were startled by Ronnie's outburst. Miss Thornberry held Ronnie to prevent him from hitting himself any further. She calmed him down by whispering softly in his ear that everything was okay. In addition to being Ronnie's first day at his new school, it was also Miss Thornberry's as well. And since the episode on the playground had just occurred, Miss Thornberry knew it was the appropriate time to speak with Ronnie's classmates about autism. So later that afternoon, she visited with the children, and there were many questions that came her way. Why did he hit himself like that? asked a girl in the front row of the classroom. First, let me explain to you that not all children with autism hit themselves. In Ronnie's particular case, he sometimes reacts to stressful situations by crying and hitting himself. Like earlier today at recess, said Miss Thornberry. Miss Thornberry continued by asking the students if any of them knew what it was like to be the new kid at school. Four students raised their hands. Then you know how hard that can be, said Miss Thornberry. Well, this is Ronnie's first day at our school, and unfamiliar surroundings are often very stressful to children with autism. Why wouldn't he answer me when I asked him a question? asked Tyler, one of the boys who had yelled at Ronnie during recess. He just repeated what I said. I apologize that Ronnie upset you, but please know that he wasn't purposely ignoring you or trying to make you angry, replied Miss Thornberry. So his answer was a mistake? asked Tyler in a puzzled voice. Well, not a mistake, smiled Miss Thornberry. It just means that Ronnie sometimes echoes the words and sounds that he hears back to their source. I'm sorry I was mean to Ronnie, said Jason, the other little boy who had yelled at Ronnie during recess. He can play with me anytime he wants. Me too, said several of the other children. That's very kind of you. That will certainly help Ronnie feel more comfortable, said Miss Thornberry. As Miss Thornberry continued to speak with the students about autism, she was happy to see the connection she had made between them and Ronnie's condition. After that first day, Ronnie did have more outbursts from time to time, but the support and understanding from his classmates helped him when he did. Ronnie always looked forward to spending time with his friends at recess. It wasn't that he didn't enjoy the slides or teeter-totters, he did. But playing marbles was by far his favorite activity. And anyone who played marbles with Ronnie knew he would only play with red ones. To him, the sun seemed to make them shine more than the rest. He liked that. The End